let me lay the foundation over here and let me go ahead as the Lord would speak to our hearts this evening. I want you to understand a couple of truths about the Holy Spirit. How many of you know the Holy Spirit is the, the, the message of the ministry of the Holy Spirit is one of the most ignored, one of the most neglected ministries in, in Canada, in the Western Hemisphere. We have, we have sub, you know, substituted the ministry of the Holy Spirit with other things, with programs, with, with display on the platform, with more coming from the platform. And, 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 and excellency in, in, in music and, 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 and different light setting and a lot of things that will make people get engaged in a worship service. I've seen we have so beautifully trimmed the worship service to a point we have even calculated every minute and every second that people will feel interested in the worship service. But let me tell you something, the Lord is going to release a move of God where you don't want sound effect or the sight effect to keep people occupied because God is in the house. People are going to come with hunger. Can I get a shout of praise in the house of the Lord? We are going to see the Holy Spirit move in a very, very special way. Now listen to this. And I want everybody to understand how Jesus saw the ministry of the Holy Spirit. First of all, I want you to understand if your church is willing, I would also appreciate a certain welcoming to this message. How many of you know Jesus was the greatest teacher that was alive? Amen. How many of you know some of the things that Jesus taught at that point of time, the disciples were not even able to comprehend. It took the Holy Spirit even to, to, to and make them understand the very teachings of Jesus Christ. It was profound. But how many of you know Jesus, one of the style which was the most uh, general style of a Jewish rabbi. A Jewish rabbi would sit and teach. So if any time you see me sit and teach, I'm becoming a Jewish rabbi. A Jewish rabbi would sit and teach. And that's how Jesus taught. A Jewish rabbi or a teacher would only stand even he's about to say something very, very significant. Amen. Now I wanted to see how Jesus opened up the teaching on the Holy Spirit. From the book of John chapter 7. Look at those words. John chapter 7. And verse number 37 onwards. In the last day of the great feast. Jesus stood. He was sitting until then. He stood. Because he's about to make a very significant statement. He stood. And then the Bible says, the next word of importance. He didn't speak. He cried. Meaning he lifted up his entire voice. And used every faculty of his being. As he declared at the top of his voice, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. The next two words. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. The next two words. But this spake he of the spirit. Which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given. Because that Jesus was not yet glorified. What am I trying to say? The greatest teacher of all times. He made a distinctive statement by his expression. As he stood up to point out the importance of what he's about to say. It is not like any other teaching. This is the mother of all teaching. He stood up and said as loud as he can I'm now talking about the Holy Spirit let me tell you there's a respect Jesus gave when the Holy Spirit is mentioned and today as we are starting the series on the Holy Spirit can I see somebody in this church who honors the Holy Spirit who is willing to give a respect and honor to the ministry of the Holy Spirit can you do it come on somebody lifting up of your voice giving the Holy Spirit a welcome, a honor in the house of the Lord. 
Those of you watching me wherever you are, let me encourage you as I'm about to speak about the Holy Spirit. This is not to be put together with some other teachings that you might have received from the Bible. But this is extraordinary. This has the power to change your life. And tonight, we as a church want to welcome, welcome, welcome for the sake of Canada, for the lands of the world, the teaching and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Can you do it? Oh, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. I want to declare every for every church that has dismissed him to just a benediction at the end of a service. For every church that dismissed him to a creed that forms their traditional view of their own denomination. I want to make a change tonight. For us, he's not just a part of a creed. He's not just part of a benediction he is God he is life transforming he is the mighty force of God if you want to acknowledge it can you put your hands together let's welcome the Holy Spirit come on let's welcome in the name of Jesus the ministry of the Holy Spirit upon the land of Canada let's welcome we Believe in a new Pentecostal move of God. Hallelujah to Lamb of God. Jesus made it significant. I love. I thank you young people that stood up. May God bless you. We are laying for every time the church dismissed him. Here is a congregation. Welcoming him. Amen. And those of you welcomed him as the, the most powerful manifestation that God has for this generation. I want to declare this. You are going to see his power in your family, in your children's lives, in your ministry. In the name of Jesus, we welcome the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let me go one step further as this is going to be a message that's going to be spoken over a few days. I don't want to just give uh, the, 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 the place where you get excited alone. I want to lay a foundation as well. How many of you know the writers of the gospel had a different way of writing about the Holy Spirit? The synoptic gospels as we call them, Matthew, Mark, and Luke are the synoptic gospels. They mentioned about the Holy Spirit. But how many of you know of the three synoptic gospels? There is one gospel writer that stands out when it comes to the Holy Spirit. And his name is, I mean, Dr. Luke. Luke, the third gospel he writes about the Holy Spirit in a different way. I will be proving that to you tonight. For him it was different. And then we know John. How many of you know for Luke everything was about the Holy Spirit? The announcement. Mary conceiving. Elizabeth dancing. John being filled. Jesus being led. Jesus preaching the first sermon. Everything had to do with the Holy Spirit. Can I get agreement here? Yeah. Everything had to do with the Holy Spirit. And I wanted to know this. For him, it was the whole gospel of Jesus Christ is connected to the Holy Spirit. I will be talking about it in the next few days. But then we have John's writing. And I want to say this. If Luke brought forth the action of the Holy Spirit... John brought forth the theology of the Holy Spirit. John was the one who called him the paracletus, the comforter. Jesus talking about the one who is going to come. It was John who revealed the Holy Spirit. It is in the gospel of John that Jesus blew on his disciples and said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. So if Luke dealt with the action of the Holy Spirit, John dealt with the theology of the Holy Spirit. And no wonder 
when God said to Luke, Luke, you know, you are the best man to write about the action of the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to give you a task. You also write the acts of the apostles. The acts of the apostles is not just the acts of the apostles. Many people say it should be rewritten as the acts of the Holy Spirit. For him, everything, action, the whole gospel is about the action of the Holy Spirit. And God gave Luke another assignment. You write about the action of the Holy Spirit called Acts of the Apostles. I love that. Now let me go further. Now I wanted to bring two important statements from Matthew and Luke. Are you with me? Don't you miss tomorrow night. Two important teaching of the Holy Spirit from Matthew and Luke. So I want you to understand. Look at that please. Look at that. Matthew writing. In Matthew chapter 7. And verse number 11. Matthew 7, 11. Can you look at this please? Matthew 7 and verse number 11. If you then being evil. Know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more. Everybody say, how much more? Shall your father, which is in heaven, give good things? The word I want you to look at is good things. Everybody say, good things. To them that ask him. How many of you know Jesus talking about prayer? He's talking about asking in prayer. And he said, anytime you ask your father in heaven, he will give Good things. How many of you know your father is in the business of giving good things? Yes. Now you didn't hear me. I said your heavenly father is in the business of giving good things. Yes. No, no. I, I, I want, this is a lie of the devil that we need to hit where he hurts. We need to damage that lie and dent it forever. The enemy has got a way of saying the world gives you the good things and God is somehow is a boring God. He only gives you misery. Now that's a lie from the pit of hell. Today we are going to cancel that lie and say my heavenly father is a giver of all good gifts. Come on. If you believe that, shout a hallelujah. He's a giver. You know, when I was preparing for this meeting, for this message, I kept on hearing the word. Now I know why the Lord kept on speaking that to me. He said to me, this time tell my people, my people shall know the truth and the truth shall set them free. This is going to be a week of deliverance, but it's going to be done by the truth of the word of God. And I want to declare one powerful truth. When your father in heaven hears your prayer, he doesn't give you broken things. He gives you always the good things. Come on. If you believe that, can you lift up your voice and shout an amen? He's a giver of good gifts. But now we need to go into Luke. Now Luke has another way of looking at it. When Matthew said good things, I think Pastor Dino made reference to that the other day. Luke had another way to say it. Now if you truly believe Luke is right, I want you to give, uh, 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 what do you call uh, uh, a uh, sound of, I like that. Could you do that? I, I really believe that. Okay, there we go. Come to book of the Gospel of Luke, chapter uh, eleven and verse number fourteen, I believe. Okay, verse number thirteen onwards. Verse number thirteen. Look at that. If you then, being evil, the same words that Jesus said, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more? Shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Can I get a witness somewhere here? How many of you can joyfully say the best gift in the world is the Holy Spirit? If Oh, you can do it better. How you put every good gift of God into one basket? It is called the Holy Spirit. If you believe that, shout a hallelujah. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. Oh, he is the greatest gift. He is the best gift. He is the good gift. And everybody that received him, think about it. In the Old Testament,
man. One David, a shepherd boy, got the gift of the Holy Spirit. The next thing we know, he became the greatest king ever. Somebody called Gideon received the Holy Spirit. And the next thing we know, he becomes the greatest commander ever in Israel. What am I trying to say? The gift of the Holy Spirit can change your life forever. But today the Lord is saying, ask, he will receive it. Come on, ask and you shall receive it. Amen. Listen to this. How many of you want to say as joyfully as you can, if when I get the gift of the Holy Spirit, I don't even have to pray for single things. In the gift of the Holy Spirit, He's my anointing. In the gift of the Holy Spirit, He's my healing. In the gift of the Holy Spirit, He's my providence. In the gift of the Holy Spirit, He's the deliverance of my children. In the gift of the Holy Spirit, He's my future promises. In the gift of the Holy Spirit, He's the fulfillment of my promises. How many of you are happy? Because the greatest gift is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The gift of the Holy Spirit. Matthew called it good gift. Luke called it the Holy Spirit. Now let me ask you something. Number one, he is the biggest, best gift. And when he comes, he gives you the best gifts. If you truly believe that, can you acknowledge tonight the Holy Spirit when he comes, everything that my family needed, everything that my life needed, he's already provided for. If you believe that, put your hands together, give the Lord a shout of praise. Everything that I needed, he's provided for because of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let me go to the next point. This is going to get exciting. Are you with me? Let me go to the next point. You know, Matthew spoke something about the Holy Spirit in a direct reference to the Holy Spirit and see how Luke speaks about it. And before I move on, let me say, when Jesus, or when Jesus said about the Holy Spirit, how many of you know he said it at the end of a long teaching on prayer? The first passage was, he taught you what to pray. Our Father in heaven. Then he said the importunity in prayer. That means keep on praying till you receive it. He spoke about a, a friend who went and asked for bread. And the other friend said, I am tired. I'm sleeping with my kids. I can't open the door and give it to you. But he, because of his continuous importunate asking, he was provided for. He spoke about the specificity in prayer. Three bread. And then he said about the general truth. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened for you. And then he said something. He said about, you know, the benevolence of the giver. If you ask for bread, he will not give a stone. And finally, he said, but what are you asking for? The Holy Spirit. I want to declare the ultimate and the most powerful end result of every prayer is to ask for more of the Holy Spirit. Can I get a shout of praise in the house of the Lord to ask for more of the Holy Spirit? Now let me come to another truth. This is going to get exciting and some of you would feel like, you know, moving, you can move, them. something mighty is about to happen. And I want to remind you, don't you miss tomorrow night. Because the revelation is just coming. Amen. Now I wanted to get to a place where G Matthew and Jesus, uh, Luke said about the Holy Spirit. Two different words. Matthew chapter 12 and verse number 28. Matthew 12, 28. But if I cast out devils. Oh, I like that. By the Spirit of God. That means the devil and the Holy Spirit cannot coexist. Whenever the devil, whenever the Holy Spirit shows up, the devil is cast out. Or oh, some of you look disappointed when I said that. I said, whenever the Holy Spirit shows up, 
every demon has to be cast out. Come on, if you believe that, shout in agreement, amen. Every demon will be cast out. Now look at this. And then the kingdom of God is come unto you. But look at what Luke says about the same thing. Luke 11, 20. I love this. Luke eleven twenty. But if I, with the finger of God, cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God has come upon you. And tonight, I want you to know, there's a new name for the Holy Spirit that Luke gave. He's a finger. He's a finger of God. Can I get some agreement? Amen here. And I am standing here with such an authority tonight as the presence of God is moving. I want to declare the finger of God is in the house of the Lord. The finger of God is moving in this hall tonight. The finger of God is moving in the homes of people watching this program right now. And when the finger of God will move, every demon will have to be cast out in the name of Jesus. If you believe that, shout an amen. The finger of God. Now interestingly, interestingly, the word finger of God is only used four times in the Bible. And, and five times with another additional reference. Let me look at the first time the word finger of God is used in the Bible. It's used in the book of Exodus chapter 8. Can you come to book of Exodus chapter 8? The finger of God. And verse number 17 onwards. Can you please read that? Exodus eight seventeen onwards. And they did so, the magicians, witch doctors, the sorcerers, they did so. For Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth. And it became lice in man and beast. All the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. Now that's a very powerful miracle. Aaron or Moses hit in one place and the miracle spread across the land. You know, let me pause for a moment. I believe tonight when people of God are praying here, I'm going to speak by faith. The miracle that we are praying for, the move of God, will not just be confined within these halls. We are going to see it move in nations in the name of Jesus. If you believe that, shout an amen. It will move in nations. Now look at this. I want every demon in hell to hear this. If some of you want to join with me in, in posting a challenge against the power, so if you'll join with me. Next to us. And they did so. Okay, and the magicians did so with the enchantment to bring forth lies. Why did they do this? Because the previous time, any time when Moses would do a miracle, a sign, a, a wonder, the magicians would at least, not fully, would at least to a certain extent duplicate it. So they tried to impress. What you can do, yes, you can bring forth a huge snake. But we will bring at least a tiny pea, you know, puny snake. And very soon the snake of Moses will swallow. The snake of the sorcerers. Nevertheless, they did it. They wanted to say we are also in the ring. We are not completely out of the ring. Yes, we have been beaten so badly. We have gone through how many times we fall in the ring. I don't know. Some of you don't even know. You have been beaten, but you rise up again. And they, were, they kept on, you know, doing what most of doing to show that we are not out of the contest. For the first time, God kicked them out of the ring. And said, you're not even a match. They did not bring forth lies. So there were lies upon man and upon beast. Look what they said. Then the magician said unto Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. And I heard in my spirit, can somebody join with me tonight as we declare it over the land of Canada. The Lord says, I'm going to send some of the powers that were ruling this nation out of the context. 
out of the contest. Come on, hallelujah. Because the Holy Spirit is about to show up. The finger of God is about to show up. If you believe that, can you put your hands together? Give the Lord a shout of praise in the house of the Lord. The Holy Spirit is going to... Oh, come on. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. The Lord says every time I moved in your family, every time I moved in your children's life, every time you had a special move of God in your life, something the devil will do after a few days in your own family to show that he is still there. He has not left the ring. But tonight the Lord says enough is enough. Come on, hallelujah. God says when my finger shows up, he has no more place in the ring. If you believe that, put your hands together. Give the Lord a shout of praise in the house of the Lord. I'm prophesying over people. Every time my spirit moved, every time when God moved, the enemy tried to show he's still in the ring. But tonight, the Lord said this fasting and prayer, he's been kicked out of the ring forever, forever, forever. If you believe that, this is a finger of God. This is not just Moses. This is God's finger. If you believe that. No, you didn't hear me. I said, if you believe that, for the sake of your family. If you believe that, for the sake of your children. If you believe that, for the sake of Canada. If you believe that, for the sake of your ministry. Can you... Can you give the Lord a shout of victory in the house of the Lord? This, this is the finger of God. Devil, you have played with some of my people. You have tried to duplicate their works in the land. Sometimes you you were even more impressive than my servants. But God says the time has come. This land is going to cry out. This nation is going to cry out. Africa is going to cry out. The Muslim nations are going to cry out. And say, this is a finger of God. Come on, hallelujah. There is no match. There is no match for the finger of God. If you believe that, can you declare it as loud as you can? There is no match. How many of you have been disappointed by the fact that every time there's a move of God, every time God does something, when you go back home, what you see is a duplication. What you see is the devil doing something in order to distract you. So you will forget what God did and you will focus on what the enemy did. But God says it's come to a time. He cannot do it anymore. He cannot do it anymore. This is a time and season of the finger of God. Can I get a sh- Oh, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Can I get a witness somewhere here? Every time you are filled with the Holy Ghost, every time you shout a praise in the house of the Lord, every time you move in the Spirit, when you go back home, you're confronted by the actions of the demonic spirit so that you will start thinking and focusing on what the devil is doing. But God says it's come to a point. You're not in a season where God is doing something for the devil to duplicate. This is a season where God is bigger. He is the ultimate and is doing it once for all. Hallelujah. This is the finger of God. And tonight the finger of God is in the house of the Lord. It's touching people wherever you are. The description of the finger of God is disappointment for the magicians. But it is exuberance for the children of God. It is joy for the children of God. For the finger of God is showing up in your family. If you want to be joyful tonight because of the finger, somebody shout a hallelujah. We are going to see the finger, the finger of God move in the house of the Lord. Let me say this. The word the finger of God is used with the power of the Holy Spirit. It's the power of God. The second time it is used, it's with regard to the writing of God. How many of you know in, 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 in Deuteronomy chapter 9 verse number 10? Look at what, what uh, Moses says. Deuteronomy chapter 9 verse number 10. Look at that. And the Lord delivered me on two tables of stone written with the finger of God. And this morning, this evening, the Lord told me, 
it was not just a fire. It was a Holy Spirit. How many of you know on the day of Pentecost on Mount Sinai after 50 days of their Passover, the finger of God appeared on the mount. But fast forward on the day of Pentecost in the upper room. After 50 days, Jesus died and rose from the dead. The same finger appeared. But when the first time the finger appeared, 3,000 people were killed on, because of Mount Sinai. But the second time the finger appeared, 3,000 people were born again. The Bible says the law kills, but the spirit gives life. Today, that finger is coming upon your family, upon your children's life to give you new life. If you believe that, can you give a Lord an expression of joy in the house of a Lord? A finger, the finger of God, the Holy. He's a giver of life. But let me say what the Lord spoke to me and then I will continue tomorrow. What the Lord spoke to me. Are you ready for this? When did Jesus say about the finger? The Bible says Jesus, there was a man brought to Jesus. I want you to take this word because this is where I will be starting tomorrow night. A man was brought to Jesus who was mute, could not speak. But instead of healing the dumb man, Jesus commanded the spirit to come out. I want to understand something. There are problems and sickness that came because of a demonic presence. Jesus looked at the spirit and said, come out of him. The Bible says when the spirit came out, the man was made whole. He started to speak. And then the Pharisees and the teachers of the law came to Jesus and said, you are doing it with the power of Beelzebul, which is the one of the, I, I think Greek it is, or, or, or Latin it is. But the word in the authorized version is Beelzebub. The prince of the devil. You're doing it by the prince of the devil. And Jesus said a house divided in itself cannot stand. And then he said I'm not casting out demon by a demon. But if I with the finger of God. Cast out demons. The kingdom of God. Is come upon you. You know what was he trying to say? I want everybody to look at me because a miracle is about to happen in some families. Jesus said, when you brought that man to me, the finger of God came and pointed to me what is the root of the sickness. The finger of God spotted the power behind it. But the good thing about this finger, it will not just show you the, where the power is or the power behind it. That finger which no magician in Egypt could stop will go inside and remove that spirit. And throw that spirit out. Cast that spirit out. And I heard a voice tonight. I want everybody to just receive it. The Lord told me some of my people were held in bondage. And they only could see what was happening on the outside. It could be finance. It could be physical. It could be a family. But tonight the Lord says a finger of God. Is in this house. 
And that finger is moving upon your family right now. And that finger has identified the spirit that was blocking your blessing. That finger has identified the spirit that was blocking your anointing. And tonight the finger of God is removing that spirit out in the name of Jesus. If you believe that. People are going to be set free tonight in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of darkness that was hovering and hiding behind families, inside families, inside the nation, inside this land, will have to come out in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. I stand here as a man with a mission tonight. The Lord says enough is enough. The Lord says tonight my finger, my finger is moving upon families. He's moving upon people. He's moving upon the church. He's moving upon this land. He's moving upon people who are watching me on, on, on this program. In the name of Jesus. And every spirit that is blocking your blessing. Blocking your anointing. Blocking your speaking. Blocking your blessing. Will have to come out tonight. Because this is the night of the finger of God. If you believe that. Somebody lift up your voice and shout hallelujah. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Some of you are going to experience physical deliverance right now. Some of you are going to experience deliverance in your family right now. This is the hour. This is a moment of the finger of God coming upon people in the name of Jesus. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. I sense in my spirit people being set free. The power of darkness that was hiding and, 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 and working in your family will have to come out. Not tomorrow, but tonight in the name of Jesus. This is a night of the finger of God. Spirit of sicknesses, I command you come out. Spirit of destruction, I command you come out. Spirit of evil, I command you come out in the name of Jesus. Your time is up. You're no match. You're no match for the finger of God. Tonight is a night of the finger. The lying, killing, murderous spirit will have to come out. What has happened? We don't even see things in the spiritual anymore. But tonight the finger is going to point. The finger is going to point. He is not going to point in a specific in, in, in a general area. He is going to point in a specific area. That is the area in which I am going to set you free. That is the area from which I am going to give you a deliverance. Come on, somebody receive the ministry of the finger of God. The ministry of the blessed Holy Spirit of God tonight. If you are happy to receive it, come on with the joy in your heart. Receive the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The spirit that blocked some of your faculties. The spirit that blocked some of your expressions. The spirit that blocked some of your blessings. Tonight will have to be identified and will have to be cast out in the name of Jesus. Receive it. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. But how many of you can truly believe when the finger of God manifests? You know, that's one of the things that I've always believed in. It's not that the Spirit has got another day to stay there. Because he, the devil is no match. He will try everything, but he cannot duplicate. He cannot even reproduce, even in the most, what do you call, intangible manner, what God has done. He's no match for him. That means God is going to make him close the shop and go out of business. In that particular area of your life. In the name of Jesus. Do you want to receive it tonight? In the name of the Lord. The finger of God. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. I'm speaking the finger of God over families. I heard the spirit of God say, just reveal me, release me, 
and let my people know me and the rest I will do my finger is going to come huh? the finger of God is going to come upon every family tonight and when the finger of God comes the secret power of darkness hiding in your family will have to go out in the name of Jesus if you believe that come on lift up your voice and give the Lord a shout of praise